So a while ago, I shared a story with you guys about the proudest moment of my life, and that was walking away from a job that I hated forever. And that's something I fantasized about for years before I was finally able to build up the confidence and courage to do it. And I know many of you watching this video right now have felt this way about a job before. You might even feel that way about your job right now. So I felt a responsibility to make this video to tell you exactly what happened after I quit my job. Hey, what's up? My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth where I show you how to save money and make more money all while bettering yourself every single day. I cover a ton of topics on this channel and I relate these all back to my own personal experiences to serve as a motivation to you. Let's get into this video. Now, I know I gave a very encouraging and motivating story about how I got through those challenges and was able to quit my high paying job in the last video, but I think it's just as important for me to tell you exactly what happened afterwards. So yes, get ready for yet another motivating, encouraging story. So at the end of my last video, I left you hanging a little bit. And if you don't remember, I'll give you a quick recap. After going through all that pain, doubt, and agony, and I know that sounds about dramatic, but it's true. After going through all that and still being able to come out on top, quit my job, move across the country for a better job, which paid over $12,000 more a year, had me feeling like I was invincible. Like, I was on top of the world, like nothing could stop me. That feeling didn't last long at all, and I'll tell you why. I remember when I was going through that hellacious experience, and I just remember feeling like I was trapped and chained to something that I literally hated. And I know that hate is a strong word, bro, but I'm telling you right now, if you haven't watched that video that I made about what I went through at my last job, go watch it right now, because I am telling you, there is no word in this world strong enough to describe how strongly I disliked that job. Anyway, I just remember calling my grandfather a lot throughout the time, and this lasted for about two years, by the way. I just remember calling him a lot and just updating him on what was going on and how I was feeling about it. By the way, my grandfather is also my pastor, so he was the perfect person to talk to about these things. Because at the time, I was at the lowest point of my life, despite looking successful or happy to everyone else. Plus, I felt like he was the only one who could really resonate with what I was going through, because whenever I would mention it to someone else, he'd be like, well, you gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah, I got tired of hearing that, man, real talk. That's the whole reason I'm making this video, because you do not have to put up with that crap, bro. I don't care what anybody says. Like, it had me to the point where I was having some really dark thoughts, man, and nobody should have to go through that. I felt like, why am I having to go through this as hard as I work, as good of a person as I am? Why should I have to be susceptible to this type of treatment? But I didn't sit around and victimize myself, though. I did something about it. So, the reason I'm telling you all that is to make this point. It made it that much sweeter when I quit my job, put in my two weeks notice, and by two weeks notice, I mean a one day notice. Mm-hmm, that's right. Y'all didn't give me no two weeks notice when y'all told me I'd be working every single day, seven days a week, 12 to 14 hours a day without any appreciation or decency towards me. Matter of fact, I found out the day of. Reggie, uh, I know you're about to go home and enjoy your three day weekend, but actually we have a different plan for you. That plan is to actually have you work an ungodly amount of hours so we don't have to work over 40 hours a week like we normally do. So instead of working 42 hours a week, they were trying to set themselves back to 40. Yeah, that means you're working 80 hours a week minimum. Okay, have a nice day, bye. Have a nice day. Yeah, so anyway, it made it that much sweeter when I told them the day of that I was leaving. Look, <laughs> and then they had the nerve to say some, uh, Reggie, uh, this isn't enough notice. Bro, what? Oh, so you want me to leave right now? Yeah, I didn't think so. Anyway, as soon as I quit, I pretty much went straight home that day. And by home, I mean my hometown. And I pulled up at my grandparents' house. And the morning before I quit, I just remember calling my grandfather and saying, Hey, look, today is the day. This is my last day at this place. But even though I called him that morning, I don't think he was expecting me to pull up once I actually did it because he looked kind of surprised when I showed up in his driveway. But anyways, I got out of the car like, I did it. And you know what? There was not a single thing that I accomplished in my entire life that made me more proud than that moment right there. So you better believe I was on cloud nine for a few days. Invincible. Untouchable. I didn't know how to act. And look, even my team members were so happy for me that they took me out to one of my favorite restaurants, which at the time was Kickback Jack's. 
I'm going to actually put the picture on the screen right now so y'all can see it. I couldn't help but think like, wow, even when I was at my lowest point, when I doubted myself and second guessed my decisions every single day and had several intrusive dark thoughts, my team was still impacted by me in a positive way. My victory high didn't last too long though because shortly after that, I did eventually hit a wall and I crashed hard. And what I mean by that is all the energy that I put into that place that I used to work and all the energy it took for me to get the heck up out of there in addition to the mental capacity it took, the mechanical capabilities that were required to do the job, all mixed in with leading a large group of people and dealing with difficult management took a toll on me in the worst way possible. So the time I could have been spending with my friends and family before I moved across the country was actually cut into a fraction. And this is a very real phenomenon. I'm just not actually sure what the exact term is, but it's similar to survivor's guilt. And it's similar in that once you come down from your victory and your invincibility stage, you start to feel really bad for some reason, or at least that's what happened to me. And when I get like that, I don't do a lot of moving, talking, nothing. I basically didn't do anything for that entire time. Granted, I did get my last job to pay me out PTO, which stretched over the course of an entire month. I gave myself an entire month to not have to worry about work. I set my start date back a few weeks just so I could recover and, of course, move myself across the country. And, of course, when I was plotting to leave that place, I had strategically planned this way ahead of time because I knew I was going to need at least a month to get my sleep pattern back right, you know what I'm saying? And I made it to where I wouldn't miss a single paycheck between jobs. And it's very good that I did that because I did crash and I spent most of those days just sleeping. And most importantly, setting standards for my life so I could know what I would never tolerate ever again. So I decided never again will I allow someone to wave a dollar in my face as leverage to keep me somewhere where I know I don't belong. Never again will I allow someone to disrespect me without there being any consequences. Never again will I allow the illusion of being stuck at a job become my reality. I set extremely high standards for myself because I knew that from that point forward, I was going to live life on my own terms no matter what. I said, you know what? If I move across the country and things don't work out, guess what? I will rinse and repeat. I will do the same exact thing I just did until I get to a point where I never have to go through that mess again. Because the whole reason I went through any of that mess in the first place is because I didn't have those standards. I didn't have those aspects of my life dialed in yet. I didn't have that sixth sense to identify when I was being lied to, taken advantage of, or just blatantly disrespected. And you know what? So many people there tried to pull some shady stuff. They didn't like the fact that I was young, 21 years old, 22 years old, doing my thing, trying to grow in the company, trying to learn everything I could. And I know because people came to me saying this stuff on a daily basis. And people were trying so hard to get me fired. But I mean, we, we can talk about that in another video. Like that's, that's a whole nother topic by itself. You know what I'm saying? But I say all that to say I'm the type of person that I'm positive no matter what. Like sure, I might have had my days where I had my dark thoughts and where I just felt like giving up. But I never did. I never acted on those thoughts. You get what I'm saying? I remained positive and I continued to positively impact people despite what I was going through. I wasn't about to sit there and make someone else suffer just because I was having a bad day. That goes against everything I believe in. And with that said, I'm pretty optimistic just by default. I was born this way. That's, that's just how I've always been. Some people might even call it a disposition. And you know what? I'm good with that. I am who I am and I own it. I don't care. That's who I am. I'm optimistic as I don't know what. Even though all of that stuff went down at my last job, I didn't let that get to me when I was going to this job. When I was moving out here across the country, I was like, I have the highest hopes, the best intentions, and I have a ton of ambition when it comes to this and what I want to do while I'm out here because I was driven and highly desired to see a positive impact in my life. And I got just that. I got a cool job working with teams who are making world changing impacts in the technological slash manufacturing world. I made a lot more money working literally half the hours I used to work. I met new people. I formed strong bonds with people that I wholeheartedly trust. I've gotten to explore. I've been to cool places. I've actually had the time to get a decent amount of sleep. And most importantly, I have control. 
And you know what? Before I moved across the country over here to Nevada, I was in North Carolina. And when I was in North Carolina, something I really wanted to do was start a YouTube channel. And since I moved to Nevada, I've been able to do just that. And a lot of the motivation behind my YouTube channel right now were things that I went through at my last job. Because if you were to put yourself in my shoes, in the exact same situation that I was in a few years ago when I was going through all that mess, but you didn't prepare yourself for the worst, you could be going through what most people in America are going through right now. And that's working a job you hate, feeling stuck, underpaid, underappreciated, undervalued, and even worse, being unprepared to even do anything about it. Busting your tail putting in those hours and nothing to show for it whatsoever. And I thought about this when I was going through all that. I was like, wow, what if I wasn't prepared? So I'm going to tell you what was happening. While I was doing all that suffering and having so many dark thoughts every single day, not wanting to get up out of bed, not wanting to do anything, but literally forcing myself to go into autopilot mode and just do the job, go home. Do the job, go home, despite how miserable I actually was. And at this point, I was honestly feeling less than a human being because I felt like a freaking robot. But even though all that stuff was going on in the background and internally, I was still preparing myself. I had well over $20,000 in my savings account. I had money invested. I had a side hustle because even though I felt like I had no control when they worked me 80 plus hours a week. And even though I was made to feel like I could lose my job at any given moment, I was really preparing myself the whole time to have all the control in the end. Because let's be honest, bro. What excuses do you hear when someone really wants to leave their job and that's all they ever talk about, but they straight up won't do it? You hear stuff like, well, I'm not financially stable enough to do that. I have family and friends out here. I can't go anywhere without them. But what about my wife and kids? Because you know what? Those were the exact same things that held me back. And I don't even have a wife and kids yet. But you know what? These were things that people were planning in my head all throughout the time that I was going through that mess at my last job. And real quick, I'm going to tell you my philosophy around all that stuff because life is too short to be miserable. First of all, it's almost always going to be about money. I don't have the funds to move across the country. That was something that stopped me in my tracks right away because I was like, wait a minute, I don't even know how much this costs to move across the country. Am I going to have to come out of pocket? Well, in this case, the company I moved to actually paid me a lot of money to relocate and it more than covered the cost to even do so. So that took that excuse away. Plus, like I just told you, I had over $20,000 in my savings account. So worst case scenario, if they didn't pay me to come out here, I technically still would have had enough money to come out here. And the second excuse is, of course, you know, what about my family and friends? I can't just leave them. And for me, I moved across the country to a way, way, way far out different state. I'm like 36 hours away from where I used to be. But mine was an extreme version of this. A lot of people feel like this even if they're just moving a couple hours away from home. You know what I'm saying? And I'll tell you this, man. I had a whopping one friend out here when I moved out here. And he didn't even stay that long. So really, I was back down to zero in no time. So you know what I did? I went out there and I made friends and built relationships with people I trusted. I've never been big on having tons of friends anyways because you just can't trust everybody. I mean, that's ridiculous. And so I've, my philosophy has always been keep your circle tight. So having a small circle of a handful of friends is ideal for me anyways. So my philosophy behind that was, okay, I can stay in North Carolina, continuing to work a job that I know I hate while surrounded by family and friends and still feel lonely and completely miserable despite having friends and family nearby that I don't get to see anyway. Or I could take a chance, move somewhere that I've never lived before, talk to people that I've never met before, or I can take a chance move somewhere I've never lived before, talk to people I've never met before, and I can take the chance of actually being happy with my life despite knowing that my family and friends and loved ones are all across the country. I want you to think about that for a second. You know what? I about smacked myself when I came to this realization. I was like, well, well, guess what? If I'm happy when I move across the country, I can find a wife and have kids. I really had to sit back and realized that I wasn't in a relationship. There was absolutely nothing tying me to North Carolina at all. 
And I had to realize that I would just have to take that risk. I would have to start building trust, dating, meeting new people, all of that fun stuff. But why should that be a deal breaker for me? And that's my whole point with these three examples. Why should anything be a deal breaker when it comes to your happiness and peace of mind? Everything I was concerned about and everything I had doubts about in the beginning were a complete non-factor in the end. And all I can think about now is, wow, what if I would have stayed? Oh, I actually know exactly what would have happened if I would have stayed because I actually stayed in contact with a bunch of people who still work there. Remember when that virus hit last year? Yeah, they shut down for months. Didn't pay nobody nothing. At my current job, though, they made sure everybody was paid in full, even if we did shut down, which we did, by the way, for two weeks and not a single person missed a paycheck. And at my last job, managers got laid off and they were just SOL and all of these unfortunate things just happened. I could have been facing that same exact reality right now. I could have been facing those same exact consequences if I didn't listen to my gut and make the decision to do what I knew I should have done all along. And that was getting the heck up out of there. So if you're thinking about leaving a job that you hate, whether it's a high paying job, low paying job, it doesn't matter. If you're thinking about it and you have concerns and you're scared to do so, just always remember a lot of this only exists in your head and you'll never know the true outcome until you go for it. I would just like to take this time to caution you against making emotional decisions. Like, I don't want you to leave your job without having any other options because that can mess you up if you don't have something immediately set up afterwards. And if your finances aren't straight, it can get you in a situation pretty bad. And I've seen it happen before. And the feeling of wanting to quit a job without having any other options is a feeling that completely resonates with me because you can take it from me. I was someone who used to dream and fantasize about this on a daily basis, but even I didn't give in to those thoughts. I just wait. I waited till I had something else set up and I went for it. And that was the first step to securing the life that I always wanted to live. And I recently got promoted at my current job and I'm still able to do that and work on my dreams as well. I've made more money. I've made strong standards for my life. I've built lifelong relationships. I've built passive income streams and I'm building wealth and freedom on top of that at the same time. So what if I didn't listen to myself? That's what I want you to think about. Every time you ignore that feeling that you have inside that tells you to quit the job that you hate because there's a reason you have that feeling in the first place. Even if you want to quit your job to start your own business or become an entrepreneur, Getting a different job while you're working on that, that allows you the hours to work on your dreams outside of that can make all the difference in the world. Because then you'll have this thing called work-life balance where you're not mentally drained and you actually don't get your time and your life sucked away from you that you could be spending with your family or working on your dreams or just being with your friends and having a good time. I promise you, doing that will get you the life you want much quicker than sticking with a bad job and feeling like you're stuck there. I promise you. Remember my last video when I told you that quitting my last job was the one thing on my mind all the time, like it was literally all I could think about? Well, I did more than just think about it. I put time and effort towards those thoughts. And then you know what? I blinked. And when I opened my eyes, the life I'm living right now the life that I dreamt of living a few years ago is now reality for me. And I'll leave you with this. What if I didn't take that risk? Anyways, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. If you like it, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to like the video. I will see you in the next one. Stay cold.